Yo, people, welcome to week 29, I believe. And uh, believe it or not, I actually got sold this week on a uh, good reason to change up my squat form slightly. Uh, you're going to have to be kind of a eagle-eyed viewer to catch the difference, but I'm actually uh, stopping the descent just a touch higher than I used to. I used to like to go all the way down, basically like sit on my calves uh, when I was at the bottom. So I was like, yeah, that is ATG all the way down. Yeah, so the uh, argument that I heard uh, that swayed me was that um, somebody was talking about if you go all the way down like I just described, uh, your quads will actually turn off their tension, uh, which is not so great if you're trying to train your quads. Uh, you can actually test this yourself at home, believe it or not. Um, check out these two different examples. First, we have basically the wall sits from P90X. Like, how long can you stay in that position before your quads are on fire? Then sit all the way down. And you'll notice that you can actually sit in that bottom position practically indefinitely because, like, uh, like mentioned, the quads are turned off. So, uh, yeah, a little change there, a little more, like, bodybuilding type focus where you're trying to maintain tension on a muscle versus just moving a weight from point A to point B. So that is good. We'll see how that goes. Unrelated to that though, at least I'm pretty sure, <laughs> was the epic pain I was experiencing on Sunday and then into Monday. Uh, man, my low back uh, just like lit up. Now actually, I probably shouldn't say my low back because even though that's kind of the area where the pain is, I think the actual problem is what's called the sacroiliac joint on my right side, and that is in your hip for those of you who want to check it out for yourselves. But as you guys know, my philosophy is never to uh, just stop doing the stuff uh, unless uh, the pain is so severe uh, that you can't do it. Um, like for example, when I cut out deadlifts. Uh, during the week where I was away uh, because the pain was pretty severe uh, But in this case, you know, like these front squats, these were pretty uncomfortable. However It wasn't much more than really uncomfortable. I say, you know, uh, so I continued each set I was like, well, okay, I did that set. I'm not dead and I'm not in severe pain So let me try another set and then another set and then eventually I got the workout done and by the end of the total workout uh, I was actually feeling quite a bit better. So I really do think that you have to try and move the affected area uh, to try and get blood flow to the area to help heal things up. Uh, somewhat ironically though, uh, I think the uh, actual trigger for my problem actually happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was doing some of my post-workout hang upside down back therapy and I got a pop out of my uh, right side of my hip. And normally that side does not actually pop. So at first I thought, oh, that's probably good because normally pops are good. That's kind of why I do the uh, upside down hanging. It like seems to loosen things up and pop things out. And a brief pause to mention that it's hump day. Oh yeah. And on hump day we squatted, or I squatted, not we. <laughs> uh, 340, uh, minimal pain. Uh, actually, I don't think I felt this really at all. It was awesome. Even though my face kind of looks like I might have been feeling it. I actually wasn't. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, when that... When I got that pop out of my back, uh, for like the next like week or two, it was like something didn't feel right back there. Uh, however, there wasn't any pain, and it wasn't until this week over the weekend on Sunday that the pain hit with a vengeance. But by the end of the week, uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, you know, still some something going on back there, but at least I can like um, relieve it via stretching and popping. And actually, uh, didn't really have trouble getting the work done this week, which is kind of good. So, with that, people, that's pretty much it for the week. But, of course, we've got to update the volume data. Uh, hit 159.650 this week, which is about a 4,000-pound increase from last week. And 2017 goals update screen. Yeah, we're getting a question mark this week for no injuries because, like, eh, I don't know, something's going on back there. But, like I said, I'm still able to work, so that's good. On the uh, 11K chin-up challenge, we're currently at 68.86. And on the 7 million pounds challenge, we're currently at 4.4 million. And last but not least, the diet data screen. So yeah, even though it doesn't look like the uh, scale moved a lot, like only down 0.26 pounds, I uh, had a kind of a wild week uh, with uh, days where I appeared to be holding water and then 
days where I appeared to have completely shed the water because I actually had a new low weigh-in by like over a pound, I think, which was actually 143 flat, and I think that was on Thursday. So anyway, we're just going to hold calories where they are and just keep plugging away at it. All right, peeps, I'll catch you next time. Bye.